All right, now the question is, or there are lots of questions here, of course, will this have a significant impact on the overall economy? My opinion is, short term, pretty bad because a lot of disruption. Longer term, not so bad because there'll be a lot of rebuilding. Let's see what David Barnson thinks of that. That is my opinion. What's yours? No, I, I don't agree, but I want to be able to explain because I think that you wait, and wait, I come wait. from a... You don't agree with me. And how many times do I say that? Frequently. No, I do not. Go not ahead. with you, Stuart. Tell me. <laughs> Listen, if it, long term it made things better to have to rebuild from destruction, then why would we wait for a hurricane? Why wouldn't we just go create our own destruction so we could have the wonderful process of rebuilding? But what it misses is in the long term, we're redeploying assets and resources into rebuilding and repair, but we're taking those resources from some other part of economic use that we would rather have deployed them to. So the more efficient allocation of capital would never be what we would do based on a hurricane, because a hurricane is an awful thing. It's a disaster. Ideally, we'd rather capital be allocated towards its most organic and natural and profit-seeking use. So to have to deploy it to go into other activities is what you have to do because of, of you know human living conditions and things but it's not good for an economy mm. and I think that's what the fallacy often is where people think oh this could really be turned into an opportunity okay. but I don't want to be bearish either go back and look at what happened to GDP after Katrina which is a much at this point mm. larger than what this has and, and other hurricanes over the years there's huge regional economic impact never national economic impact. Never has been. Okay. What, what about the moral question? If the real estate along the coast there is seriously damaged, yeah. and they're in the storm path now, and they have been in the past, should we rebuild? And if we do rebuild, who pays? You know, who's going to agree with me on this answer is my friend Tammy Bruce over here. Yeah. Um, when you say we, you mean American people, uh, or do you mean the federal taxpayers? The fact of the matter is you have to go back to Grover Cleveland, to a president who said, no, I won't use federal funds to bail out things during a time of disaster. Politically, it's impossible. Correct to be able to resist. And I understand it. I'm sensitive to it. This president's not going to say no. President Bush didn't. President Obama didn't. And that's the lay of the land. But ideally, we should, meaning the community, meaning private enterprise, meaning charities, meaning churches, the natural source of what has always made America good and great, to take from, first of all, the federal government doesn't have any money. They have negative $21 trillion. But that's what's going to happen. So it's somewhat academic. Morally, though, the federal taxpayer is not who should be paying, but morally, we as American citizens should. And somebody will. Absolutely. That's, that's and good. by the way, the more efficient use and cleanup will come from the private sector anyway. <laughs> Always. Uh, Always. That, is, that is true. I just feel that there's going to be a lot more money spent. I take your point about those resources being taken from somewhere else yeah. and deployed in the Carolinas and North Georgia. I got it. President Trump is not it, reading a lot of Grover Cleveland. No, <laughs> probably not. Okay. <laughs>